You guys ready to start chapter five of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles? So we're living with Herlock now and that's all that matters. And I guess it's gonna be a murder. As long as it's not Herlock, I don't care. Or Susato, I like Susato a lot. The Hound of Baskerville. A hound it was, but not such a hound as any mortal has- Oh, never mind. It's coming! Jones's cry pierced through the thick wall of fog around us. Wisps of vapor flowed over the pistol as I cocked it, and I waited breathlessly in the stillness. The silence lasted for what seemed an eternity, until, at last, it appeared. A From the dagger. shadows of the cloud, an enormous beast sprang out upon us. A hound it was, but not such a hound as any mortal has ever seen. Its eyes glowed with a smoldering glare. The whole of its ox-sized body was outlined in white-hot flames. Its rumbling pant and hideous howl so terrified was I that I began to tremble with fear. Look well, Wilson, Sholmes declared, gazing upon the mystical beast. For this, this is the diabolical hound of the Baskervilles. Our first two months in London passed by in a flash. In that disconcerting courtroom experience we were first thrown into on the day we arrived in the country. And in Soseki-san's terrible ordeal that had followed closely behind, we had emerged victorious. However, there then came an abrupt end to our opportunities to appear in court. I mean, which is good, like, people stop getting murdered. You know, Skeeta, that's a good thing. <laughs> which was hardly surprising, of course, since I was nothing more than an amateur. An unknown student of law from a faraway land. So life in our little office was very quiet. That is, until it was shattered one day by that fateful telegram. <sighs> that morning, I was woken by the unreserved knocking on the door by the telegram, telegram boy. But after he'd gone, Suzatha san's behavior became very obviously strange. Um, Suzatha san? Yes. Is it time to leave for court already? Let me see. What case is it today? Um, I don't think I'm scheduled to defend anyone at the moment. Am I? Oh, no, of course not. How silly of me. But I think Iris said she would make us breakfast this morning. So shall we go down to Mr. Sholm's suite? Yes. Iris makes the most delicious breakfast food. She does, doesn't she? And once our bellies are full, we can leave for court in the fitting, in fighting fitting form. Let me see here. What case is it today? Oh, well, here we go again. Uh, hey, Suzato. What's the telegram? <laughs> so, um, what was it about? The telegram that was delivered this morning, I mean. Oh! A, a telegram? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> da, 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 da. Um, sorry, but you're not gonna get away with that. Well, I didn't think I would. Uh, actually, um, after breakfast? Don't give it a moment's thought. It's nothing. Nothing interesting. Boring, in fact. Ahem. <laughs> it was just a boring old telegram. Um, that's three times now that she's tried she's tried and failed to convince me it was nothing. Oh. I promise I'll tell you about it at some point. Um, okay, sure. Oh, Suzeki san, did he go back home? I suppose Suzeki san will have arrived back in Japan by now, won't he? Yes, I should think so. He left immediately after that terrible ordeal. Which would mean he should have completed the voyage already, or just be a few days away. Um, a fortnight ago, we had a very long telegram from him, do you remember? Complaining of seasickness. A fortnight is two weeks, I know that. <laughs> but by and large, it seems the voyage has been going well. Is something wrong, Naruhoda-san? I was just wondering, what might have become of Suzuki-san had he stayed in London, that's all. You mean... As regards Lord Van Zeek's, the Reaper. 
Oh well, yeah, I can't help but wondering if seasickness would have been would have paled in, into insignificance in that case. Don't mind my stuttering there. <laughs> um, what is it they say? That no one who stands in the dock can be safe from the reaper, right? Yeah, we're still not concerned about this fire, are we? <laughs> like the way the nightmares trial ended on the very day we arrived in London. Even two months on, the cause of that dreadful fire is still a mystery. Yeah, but at least Ozeki-san is safely out of the country now. Presumably, that means. That the curse of the Reaper can only take effect within the confines of the city of London, perhaps. Even if that's the case, it's a little comfort. I have a terrible sense of foreboding. If the legend of the Reaper is to be believed, it would mean he wields a sword of justice himself. Come to think of it, I wonder what he's been up to these past two months. Surely not wielding that sword against more acquitted defendants. No, I don't think so. Apparently, Lord Van Zeeks hasn't appeared in court once since our last encounter. Oh, he embarrassed. Oh? Yes, since Ozeki San's trial, he's withdrawn from judicial service again, it seems. Wait, really? We beat him that bad? Just like before, when he wasn't seen in court for all of seven years. So it's just been me who's had to face him in his recent spate of trials then, huh? <sighs> just my luck. I wonder if luck doesn't come into it. Huh? What was that? <laughs> oh, nothing. Never mind. <gasps> Has Van Zeke's been murdered? <laughs> no, right? Okay, let's get breakfast. Also, you can see, I shouldn't be blurry anymore, right? I should be like a decent camera now. <laughs> 15th April, show them sweet. Oh, what high pitch annoying voice I give you. Morning, Ramel. Morning, Susie. Good morning, Iris. Um, Iris? Does her luck not know how to play the violin? <laughs> what is it, Runo? What is that terrible noise? It sounds like a cat being strangled. Oh, yeah. You noticed that, did you? Babe, I love you, but stop. <laughs> Hurley isn't the best in this form. Hurley isn't in the best form this morning, it seems. Oh, thank God he stopped. No, I'm sorry. I love you. You're great. Keep practicing. <laughs> hello. Uh, hello, Mr. Sholmes. Good. Good morning. Oh no. Oh no! <laughs> I love him even more now, though. <laughs> Good morning to die, perhaps. <laughs> Has something happened, Mr. Sholmes? You look miserable in the way you were playing the violin before. <laughs> My analytical mind is dead. Music is dead. The world is dead. Yeah, I grew up in grunge era, so, you know, I love this. <laughs> Damn this blanche existence! That's all it is, my dear fellow. Nothing of consequence. Um, I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, Iris, isn't it time we ate? Some dry toast and a sip of coffee for me, if it's not too much trouble. <laughs> Meow. Hey, we stole Soseki's cat! <laughs> oh, look! Wagahai? It's Waka... Wagahai. I, I am so sorry for pronouncing that horribly wrong. Good morning, boy. Meow. <laughs> oh gosh, I want to call you Waluigi. <laughs> Wah! Um, that must be some sort of tiny door for cats to use. But how did it get there? Well then, everyone, time for breakfast! Oh, wonderful! Let me help you, Iris! <sighs> it would be indeed be a fine day to die. 
Oh, I knew something looked different. Oh, is the big old thing there is gone. Something's missing from Mr. Shulm's desk. Hey. <laughs> Wanting to die, let's talk about that. You seem to be very unhappy this morning, Mr. Sholmes. What happened? It used to be the case that in my hands, this violin sung like the dawn chorus. Its melisonic tones would make flowers bloom. It would? But now, the muses are unamused with me. The goddess of music have thrown me over. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Sholmes? For hours I've bowed, for days even. Through the night I've endeavored to no avail. That sound, my tone, is lost. That brilliant, clear, unwavering tone. Gone forever, no more recitals, and unbridled emotion. Literally me every time I'm like, I don't think I can draw today. <laughs> Everything I draw is garbage. Well, you haven't been practicing much, ha okay, and then she's calling me out on the fact that, you know, I stopped practicing for a bit. <laughs> well, don't worry, I'm sure I'll come back to you in time. Heed my words. Oh, heed my words, Miss Narahoto. The goddesses of art are fickle. One day they spoke genius on a man. The next, they unmercifully withdraw it. Oh, dear. <sighs> Why is this happening to me? If they take the turn I have for the vi- if they take the turn I have for the violin for me, what is left for pity's sake? What is left? Oh, <laughs> I feel you, man. Um, deduction perhaps? Isn't that what you're known for? Mr. Sholmes, I don't have to pry, but... Your desk looks rather empty today. Ah, oh, well done, Mrs. Sato. Your observational skills do you credit. Oh, no, Mr. Sholmes. They pale in, in, into insignificance when compared to yours. You'd struggle not to notice, wouldn't you? <laughs> you mean Hurley's great analytoscope? That's at Windy Banks now. Huh? It's at a Windy Bank? <laughs> no, Windy Banks. The pond broke. Oh, we broke. <gasps> you go poor taking care of us? Pawn? What? You mean you pawned that enormous machine of yours? It has some considerable value, you see. Quite undeservingly. But isn't it a very important machine for your work? I do wish you'd... I do wish you had consulted us if your situation had become so desperate. I, sh I would have gladly passed what little income I have to you. Dear madam, things are far from desperate. But the pawnbroker has your wonderful machine. How could it be anything but desperate? <sighs> Making use of a pawnbroker is quite ordinary here in London, I assure you. It is? It doesn't sound ordinary at all. It would seem that neither of you have fully understand how pawnbroking works. Oh, what's to understand exactly? Pawnbrokering. Um, what do you mean when you said we didn't fully understand how pawnbroking works? To the people of London, pawnbrokeries are akin to banks. Banks? On Mondays, merchants relinquish their finest jackets and trappings to their pawnbroker of choice. With the money they receive in return, they are able to trade happily through the week. And then on Saturdays, they go to recover their things using the money they earned. I had no idea. This has been a fascinating lesson for us. Everyone does it, you see, especially people in inner London. And should they have money to spare, they would purchase another fine jacket. Not to wear, obviously, but to pawn, should the need arise. Oh, how ingenious. So whenever we have something that's getting in the way, we leave it at window banks, you see. Pawnbroker can be thought of as an extremely secure vault. Oh, um, who could have thought that even pawnbrokers are different here in Great Britain? Yeah, I'm like, let me guess, someone bought it though. 
<laughs> Someone bought it, now we can't get it back, and he's sad forever. Of course, you have to watch Hurley with it. Sometimes he pawns things he really shouldn't. Don't you, Hurley? <laughs> what does it matter? The world is dead to me now. Okay. I think... Nope, nope, nope. Uh... Waga hi. Can you just say it with your voice acting once? It's like... <laughs> Mr. Natsume's cat seems to have settled into his new home again. Oh yes, I've become very attached to little Waggy. Waggy? Waggy. It appears previous owner is completely forgotten to him. Cats are unfeeling creatures. The muse are empties the hearts of the muses. <laughs> Aww. If Mr. Natsume had no intention of taking Waggy back to Japan, I wonder why he kept him in the first place. Um, I expect he, he would have taken him if he could. But pets are strictly forbidden aboard steamships in our experience. And for good reason. Yeah, um, <laughs> terrible things can happen if the rules of passage are not obeyed. Like your friends can all get murdered. Oh, well, I don't mind because Swaggy is adorable. Oh. Yeah, he really is. And what about the door? I don't remember seeing that tiny thing in the main door before. Where did that come from? Oh, you noticed? You're observant, Runo. Look, I use... That's a thing. <laughs> I use this. My latest invention. Um, what is that? I call it... The Cat Flapple Mats. Okay. <laughs> Gosh! A machine for making doors just for cats? Uh-huh. It can make cat... You can make a cat flap for a little furry friend like Waggy in seconds. And you can do it in any door at all, no matter what it's made of. It's very powerful, you see? Wouldn't it have been quicker just to make a cat flap rather than making a machine to make a cat flap? Well, yeah, maybe. But now I can make cat flaps wherever I like. Oh, I think it's wonderful. You must make one for us in the door of our office upstairs, Iris. She really knows how to come up with unconventional inventions, this girl. <laughs> Meow. Oh, what was that? Waluigi? Is the cat stuck? Oh my god, is the cat okay? <laughs> what was that? Oh no! Well, Luigi's tangled up in your violin- In the- How? I had a- I had a viola. I grew up and I learned the viola. It should not be able to be tangled up in, in, in the- No, that's not how that works! <laughs> I- I think he thinks it's a toy. Wait, no, what's he doing to it? Oh dear. Mr. Shum's precious violin. Why should I care? Huh? I shouldn't be surprised. If the cat is a more accomplished musician than I am. <laughs> Mr. Shum's really is in poor spirits, isn't he? Well, anyway, I'll put it back where it lives, shall I, Hurley? I know the cat's reach, if possible. Maybe we should assess the damage. All right, let's let's go find that. Uh. Oh, hold on. I've never looked on this side of this map here before. On the map, <laughs> this before. All right, how about your violin? Is it dead? So this is his violin, is it? Oh, it just broke a string. Okay, that makes more sense. That makes more sense than it being like, you know, the cat tangled in the strings. <sighs> it's a Stradivarius. One of the finest violins in the world, made by the renowned Italian luthier Antonio Stradivari. Oh, I see. 
it doesn't really look like anything special to me. Wow, that's rude, Rinosuke. I happened upon it covered in dust, languishing in a pawn shop down a nondescript back alley. The broker had no idea of its value, so I was able to purchase it for a mere 55 shillings. How honorable of you. And until today, he's been my faithful companion in every great Paganini inspired performance I ever made. I ask you, is there a reason to live in a world devoid of music? To tolerate this blanch existence? There is none. Um, um, Mr. Sholmes? What, dear madam, what? My thoughts are preoccupied with fancies of release from this dull routine. Well, it's about the violin. It looks very different to normal, don't you think? Hmm? What do you mean, Mrs. Otto? <gasps> oh, Susie's right. Yes, the tone of the wood is completely different. And that's not at all. I'm sure there was no crack here before. Wait, it's not even the right size, is it? What's this? Oh, he's cheered up. Yay. <laughs> you have a picture of it? The old one? I'm terribly sorry to tell you this, Mr. Sholmes, but that instrument isn't a violin at all. Oh, is it a viola? Then, what? I believe it's an entirely different instrument called a viola. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> I have this urge to defend violas because violas are very, uh... <laughs> Not as appreciated as much, and this just hurt that it's being not appreciated again. Look, they're a good instrument, okay? Just because they don't make the high pitch, just high pitch, they don't, they don't go as high of sounds as violins doesn't mean they don't. Okay, that, and then like in compositions, they're like, hey, can you play B flat? Play B flat for the background sound, like nonstop. That's important, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Mr. Shums, are you all right? You're right. You're quite right. Also, you would definitely notice the difference in a violin and viola. How, regardless of how depressed you were. <laughs> uh, this is my faithful Stradivarius. So what? Pray, is this piece of string flots? Babe, I love you. Stop, in stop insulting my instrument, okay? <laughs> um, not your faithful performing partner, then. Ah, uh, I see it must have happened. You do, Iris? This is just a simple mix-up. It sounds like Iris might be able to tell us what exactly happened if we ask her. You could just tell us. You can just tell us! Um, what do you mean by mix-up, Iris? Well, you see, this violin, sorry, this viola, I mean. Was at Winterbanks until last week. Oh, at the pawnbrokers. Oh, not Mr. Shum's beloved musical partner. No, he's better. There's a proverb in the East with which you are no doubt familiar, my dear fellows. Always let a beloved child travel. Yes, indeed. So you sent your beloved violin to the pawnbrokers in the hope that it experienced personal growth? Oh, what a wonderful idea! Is it? <sighs> Last week, I pawned my great analytoscope in order to release my precious instrument. But it appeared Mr. Winnebake mistakenly furnished me with this tawdry fiddle instead. But my ears cannot be deceived by the hollow timber of this piece of timber. Um, no, but your every sense was deceived by the fact that it just had strings. A fine state of affairs this is, and I always say, Mr. Narhoto, never trust a pawnbroker. They'll try to fiddle you every time. But earlier you told us you could think of a pawnbroker as extremely secure vaults. <laughs> Alright. Come, Mr. Narhoto. Dilly dallying will get you nowhere. Wait, what? Crunching your toast with that vacant aspect. Pressing your coffee so obs obtusely. Are you not all a little embarrassed by your own conduct, considering the urgency of which we are faced? We must visit Mr. Windebanks Windab procreate at once. 
Isn't that right, Mr. Sholmes? Precisely, Mrs. Otto. Without a moment's delay. But I haven't finished my bacon and eggs. My dear fellow, surely you do not still intend to crunch your bacon with increasingly bacon aspect. To fresh your eggs over more obtu obtusely. Alright, alright, say no more. Let's go then. I mean, you can eat those pretty fast, right? <laughs> Don't worry, Rudo. I'd be happy to heat it up for you again later. Um, thanks, Cyrus. As it happens, I'm rather curious to see what a British pawnbroker looks like. Alright, let's go to the... Ooh, things! It's April 15th, because it says 15 down here. And I'm looking at the calendar, even though it tells me the little clicky thing. There's a skull! <laughs> So, this is a, pawn a British pawn brokery. Oh my! There are all sorts of tools and contraptions in here that I've never laid eyes on before. Uh, this is that the sun? And the spark of wonder in your eyes. You can't wait to scour the shelves, can you? I gave the impression you enjoy places like this. Oh yes. I don't know why, but seeing such a lot of things I don't understand is a real thrill for me. My dear fellows, let us not forget why we're here. Oh, Mr. Sholmes! We are calling on matters of business, not pleasure. And clearly, Mr. Sholmes needs business too, judging from the spark of fury in his eyes. Oh, Mr. Sholmes, sir, welcome back. Did you hear that brazen welcome? Well, yeah, we're potential customers after all. We are, we are disgruntled customers, Mr. Narahodo. We are Karens today, and it's time to inform Mr. Winterbaker of our ire. Come, the fight is afoot. <laughs> okay. Oh. Hey, sir. What? What up? <laughs> Naturally, you will recall this, which I retrieved from you some days ago. Yes. This secondary fiddle is not my faithful instrument, Mister Wendebank. The color of the wood is different. It has holes in it. It's not even the same size. A wonderful summary of our observations, Mr. Sholmes. I'm, I'm so very sorry, sir. How utterly unforgivable of me. An inexcusable mistake for a pawnbroker. There's only one way to make amends. Oh, is he just gonna run away? Oh! Sir? Whoa! 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 Bro. N no? I don't think that'll be necessary, do you? <laughs> uh, if I may just say one thing before I pop off. Uh, yeah? It was you, it was you, Mr. Sholmes, who took it upon himself to remove the item the other day, I believe. Sorry? As I recall, I entered the store, the store to fetch your violin. When I heard, ah, oh, there it is. You did? I want to turn to convert to controvert you. You have taken the viola and left, sir. Okay, dude, 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 dude. Put the weapon down. I don't want to solve this crime, sir. <laughs> However, there can be no doubt that blame lies firmly at my own door for allowing you to leave. I shall not grumble or growl any longer. May this guilt die with me. No, 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 no. Stop, my dear fellow. The fault is mine. Chill. Okay. We're good. We're calm. Phew. It would appear that the fight is over. I do humbly apologize, Mr. Windebank. Evidently, my questionable disposition precipitated this tragedy. Well, you wouldn't be Mr. Herlock Scholz without that questionable disposition now, would you? Haha, <laughs> I do believe you may be right, sir. <laughs> it's either a lot for a cry, I suppose. You are, it must be said, one of my more challenging customers. I need to remind you of the peculiar collection of items you brought through my door in the past. Oh, peculiar items? In the extreme, ma'am, for example. The unpublished manuscript of an eponymous work. 
The novels are Herlock Sholmes of or some such. Oh my! A new full-fledged novel? And unpublished? A story I've, read to, I've yet to read, you mean? Oh, forgive me. Okay, dude, dude, dude. Wait, before you die, you must tell me more. This is not the... <laughs> No more. Please tell me everything. Oh, Suzette sounds really fired up now. Is there really an unpublished story under this very roof? Well, one day the gentleman here brought an old metal chest, you see. I should like to entrust this to your care for a while, Mr. Windebank. Hmm, for a chest like that. One shilling, sir, not, not a farthing more. It houses something of great value indeed. The latest manuscript, recounting the adventures of one Mr. Harlock Sholmes. I beg your pardon, a manuscript? You wish to deposit a manuscript? Indeed I do, for I'm confident it will be quite safe here. And that was that. As such, Mr. Sholmes' latest tale of unworldly mystery lies dormant in my storeroom. Mr. Sholmes, is that really true? Do I sense that someone doesn't want to talk about this? I get you to pay your fee, do I not? Then kindly continue to store my belongings securely. Of course, sir, of course. They're safe and sound with me, I assure you, on my life. This is all very strange. This is a bit more than strange. <laughs> this is, a uh, <laughs> pretty sus. I wonder, could I ask you something? Ah, a gentleman from the east, I see. Yes, that sable suit has... <coughs> I suppose I could offer you six pence for it. Without wishing to offend, the tone is somewhat dull. Huh? Ah, but for your splendid attire, ma'am, five guineas, no less. The colors are exquisite, the design exotic. Eastern artistry is finest, may I say. Oh my, five guineas, you say? How interesting. Why do I feel as though I suffered some sort of defeat here? Actually, I was hoping to ask you about your business. I've heard it said that pawnbrokeries are used rather like banks here in London. Yes, sir, indeed. Many of my customers utilize the establishment as you describe. I appraise their items and offer them appropriate loan and two months of secure stowage. If in that time they repay the original sum to me, plus the agreed interest, their items are happily returned. But what happens if they don't pay you the money? Then the items are offered for sale in my shop. As you can see, the shelves behind me. So you never sell the items before the two months has passed then? That's right, ma'am, that's right. Which means some considerable responsibility rests on my shoulders. Should a customer's precious belongings be lost, the only, the only recom recompense for me is to end it all. The very idea, Mr. Windebake, is an absurdity. I want you to ever take one to my so casually. Says the man who was telling us it was a good day to die this morning. <laughs> and let's not forget that I've already helped you take measures to ensure such a tragedy never occurs. Oh, what sort of measures? I engineered a simple device, which Mr. Windebake has installed here in the shop. I call it the Red-Handed Recorder. Is, on, is that not so, Mr. Windebank? Huh. <laughs> Um, or, uh, what was that deep sigh about? The red-handed recorder? What on earth is a red-handed recorder? Use your eyes, my dear fellow. There are two just below the ceiling. Um, I can see what it appears to be a camera attached to some sort of timing device. Very astute. Is indeed a camera furnished with some hundred pieces of celluloid film. And every 30 minutes precisely, the camera automatically records the appearance of the shop. Oh, hey, like in, like in V3. Oh, am I sliding down my chair? There. <laughs> Here, I have an example I can show you. Ah, uh, yes, a print from the camera set to record the activity at the shop counter. I developed a special type of film so sensitive it produces a crystal clear image even in darkness. Wait, really? That's extraordinary. You can 
probably, you know, get, get rich from that. Yes. As you can clearly see the counter in the door behind it, look. So you see, we're someone to enter the premises with ill intent. His identity would be summarily exposed. But, did you not say that the photograph prints were taken at 30 minute intervals? Indeed, as you say, my dear madam. <clears throat> then, what if the incident were to occur in between times? One can only say, that would be a cruel twist of fate. Hmm. I must confess, your devices have been giving me some cause of distress of late. I beg your pardon, Mr. Winnebake. Surely they are anything but distressing. Reassuring is the word. It's the cost of the film, sir. You most graciously placed not one but two cameras in my shop after all. Which, is, which means I have to pay f for nigh... I'm sorry. <clears throat> which means I must pay for nigh on 100 early uses prints every single day. I'm afraid the cost of film will break me even before I'm much older. <laughs> Nevertheless, a small price to pay to ensure the safety of my preferred pawn broker, you know. My dear fellows, we verge on an age where safety and security come at a price. Oh, heaven help us. Now then, Mr. Sholmes, allow me to return your precious violin. Oh, you had it, so it's fine. Ah, the very thing. Why, oh, thank you, Mr. Windebank. Perhaps since I mark the end of the peculiar items you try to pop, hmm? Because if anything were to happen to one of them, this would be the only answer. Um, I really think you had to stop waving that gun around. Someone would get hurt. Fear not. Huh? <laughs> uh, sir, <laughs> I've only loaded a single bullet, so no one but myself could possibly be harmed. Well, that's not really what I meant. Good day to you, then, Mr. Windebank. It's been a pleasure as always, Mr. Sholmes. Oh, boy. So, Mr. Narahoto, now we can explore at last. Oh, I'd be delighted to. Excuse me a minute while I have a look. Just before you do, there's something I should point out. My dear fellows, in order to see the image properly, Deathoscopically, as it were, you need to be cross-eyed. However, it's beyond you. Is of little consequence today. All right then, I'm going to try it. Do we, do we, do we get to see? <gasps> Mr. Narahoto, you must see at once. Oh, um, okay. So I need to be cross-eyed? Like I'm trying to look at my own nose? Is there a murder in there? Why am I trying to cross my eyes? <laughs> Wait, what the? I don't believe it. It's just a photographic print, but it seems like you could reach out and touch it. Yes, the sense of depth is startling, is it not? Stethoscopes are one of London's many fads. They're often found in little stalls in the park. People queue for hours to see them. Why? Why are people meddling with such black magic? It is no magic, my dear madam. It is, well, far too complicated to explain in the present. I shall save this lesson for... N <laughs> I'm like, old-fashioned, I'm like, I'm gonna Google it later and pretend I knew everything I was saying. Oh. Sathu, do you want a cactus? Look at this. Whatever could it be used for? Or, um, I have no idea. Ah. There's a small catch here. Look. Um, we're gonna open it? Uh, okay. Oh my, it's amazing. It's some sort of spring-loaded mechanism. Which we'll never manage to put back to the way it was before. <laughs> hmm? What are you two doing? What? Us? Nothing? Nothing at all. <laughs> Whatever the device is, it seems to have a pair of little windows to look through. I feel as though I see something similar to this elsewhere. Oh, 
Ooh, Realty Timmy's a box. Oh, what a sublime sound. It's like the music of angels. I've never heard anything like it before in my life. This particular specimen is of the larger variety, commonly found in public houses and restaurants. There's a metal disc inside which the notes to be played are recorded. Simply replacing the disc with another, any music you can imagine can be played. Oh my goodness! What a simply delightful machine! Indeed. Though their popularity has waned recently in development of the gramophone, of course. I don't know what years anything was invented, so I'm like, I don't know, our music box is peak music at the time. <laughs> Science and technology advance at such an overwhelming pace. Well, I mean, if it helps us out there, like, I, I, I love music boxes still to this day. I, I have a few. <laughs> there needs to be a little door behind that curtain there. That leads to the storage room where Mr. Windebank keeps articles that are currently in pawn. Oh, I see. There's nothing of particular interest inside. I certainly wouldn't recommend any larcenous activity. Um, recommend it or not, it's not something I tend to do. There is but one key Mr. Winnipeg keeps in his pocket at all times. That sounds like foreshadowing. <laughs> Before he sleeps, it places he places it in a small pot, which he slides under his pillow. Why do you know that? How on earth do you know that, Mr. Sholmes? I'm a detective, sir. It's my business to know what others do not. I am frequently assailed by information that I neither care for nor wish to retain. <laughs> Mr. Sholmes, you are a wonder. And the prime suspect is prime rogueries he's ever burgled. Look at that enormous ledger open on the counter here. Mr. Winnebake is, if nothing else, is very particular about recording the items he accepts. He'd have to be, otherwise he'd get himself into all sorts of trouble. Which might explain the thing that catches my eye far more than the ledger. What? I was like, the dog? <laughs> I'm like, he has a, pi a picture frame of a dog there. Which I guess is the Hound of Baskervilles. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> this revolver here. Oh yeah, or the gun. <laughs> Do not entertain even a single thought of pilfering an article herein, my dear fellow. Huh? I assure you, Mr. Winnebake would not hesitate to draw that weapon with a speed belying his portly size. Oh, you don't mean he'd... Blow his... Okay, nope, that's in that sense. Indeed, in recompense for his blunder. Um, oh my. But in any case, of course you would never do such a thing. How could you even suggest it? I did not spend 15 minutes looking around and examining everything in every location because I missed this one thing that I pointed out when I walked into the building. And that's not a calendar you can easily miss, is it? 15th of April, today's date. Yes, that's for not for sale, I must point out. It's an Eastern style page a day calendar. Every night at midnight, I tear off the front page reveal the following day's date. The perfect calendar for a tearaway fellow such as yourself, Mr. Windybank. And who was it walked out of here with the wrong violin? <laughs> well, when the agreed storage period has passed without repayment, articles are forfeited, you see? So I have to keep very close eye on the date. It's something of a pawnbroker's obsession, you might say. Oh, yes. I can see you're very dedicated to your job. What? Only tuppence for it. But that ain't fair and you know it. Article's barely worth a pen, and miss, I cannot offer more. Uh, sounds like there's an argument brewing over by the counter. Come on, that can't be right. Ah, you ever had a proper butcher's at it? <laughs> I've, I've seen all I need to see, young girl. Oh, hey, it's her. Oops, okay. <laughs> Wait, don't we know? I'm sure I recognize her. Oh, yes, it's the young lady from Mr. McGilda's trial two months ago. My oh, name is Gina Lestrade, my lord. She's a chancer, earns a crust among our crowds, uh, relieve her people of the purses. What's commonly called a pickpocket. Yeah, so, you know, pawnbroker's favorite person, I'm sure. <laughs> Golden Bennett, you lot! Hello, 
Miss Lestrade. I hope you've been well. Eh, what? You remember me then, do you? Well, I remember being completely surrounded by smoke, that's for sure. So, what are you doing in here? Down and out like the rest of us. Nothing to eat. Come to pop that black weasel, sorry coat, have you? What is it about this black uniform that makes everyone comment on it? Ah, good day. Unless I'm mistaken. You'd be the young pickpocket who stole our experimental smoke grenade launcher. <gasps> Mr. Sholmes! So, you have something of value to pawn, do you? And let me see the article and I should negotiate with Mr. Winterbeck on your behalf. Pull the other one. I don't need no help from some stuck-up D. Get out of my business. Go on, I'll make trouble for you. As you wish, Miss Lestrade. I'll happily remove myself from your presence. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's really done it. He's gone. <laughs> I'm sorry, but as I said, there really is no room for negotiation here. What is that thing he has in his hand? Oh, it's a music box. Music box disc. <laughs> Some kind of metal disc? And you, go on. Leave me alone. Oh, Miss Lestrade. Just pretend we aren't here. We shan't be offended in the slightest. <laughs> this is what the center really considered ground when she wants to. Whatever. Whatever. Hey. How you doing? <laughs> Somehow I didn't really think you were the sort of person who used a pawnbroker, Miss Lestrade. Yeah, well, I am, alright. I'm a Londoner just like everyone else. That, that a problem, is it? Well, no, no, not at all. It's just that, well... Oh, I get it. I know what you're thinking. That thing probably don't even belong to her. Probably got on the dive, didn't she? Yeah, I can see it written all over your, sh your Chevy Chase. Oh, well, I mean, I'm always thinking something along those lines. You're not going to deny it, Mr. Naruhoto. Um, alright, then I'm just gonna come out and ask you straight. Do you pawn things that you steal from other people? Well, um, I don't know how best to answer that, really. Um... Suppose. Sometimes. <laughs> You're not good tonight either, Miss Lestrade. But not this time, alright? I swear. This thing belongs to me. The disc that Mr. Winterbake is holding. Perhaps you see what he has to say about this. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Windebank, what exactly is this metal disc that Miss Lestrade has brought in? It seems to have hundreds of tiny little bumps on its surface. Ah, oh, this is the music disc, you see, for inside a music box. In a music box? What? Do I know what a music box is? <laughs> you Eastern one ain't too savvy, eh? I know what a music box is, I just never seen one of these discs before. The small protrusions of the metal disc encode the tune to be played by the music box. You simply insert the disc and set the machine going, and beautiful music plays. It's so incredible. Tell us, what tune is on this disc? Well, I'm afraid I couldn't tell you that. There's so many different types of music box, you see. British made, German, Swiss. I have no way of knowing what particular machine this disc was made for. Oh, I see. And that's it in a nutshell. I wouldn't have any customers for an item like this, even if the young lady forfeited it. Really, I'm already offering more than I should at a penny. That's a packet of lies. It told me it did. It said it was well. Hmm? He? Who? Ne'er you mind. It ain't right, that's all. That disc worth good money. I know it is. Well, then you'll have to try your luck at another prom broker, won't you? She's been in here before, of course, this little tattered chameleon. Um, I see. What the hell's a tattered chameleon? <laughs> uh, and I brought some dubious article or other with her every single time, I might add. Dubious? What are you trying to say? An honest customer, Mimi. So, was there something dubious about the disc she brought in today? 
Well, if only it were that simple. Huh? What do you mean? What she actually brought in was a storage ticket. Oh, a storage ticket, so... Mrs. Stroud has actually come to redeem an article for me today, is that right? Yeah, well that's right. A girl like me's got a lot of stuff, but needs stolen. Um, okay, yeah, that's definitely dubious. <laughs> the article in question would have been forfeited at midnight tonight. But she made a ticket for it, I had to repay both the loan and interest. I was obliged to return the article to her. But what was the article? Do tell us, Mr. Windebank. Oh, Scamp is wearing it, ma'am. It's the overcoat that she redeemed. Oh. What? What's wrong with that? If it don't, it's mine. I mean, of course it does. So, what about the disc then? How does that all come into this? Ah, oh, the disc is something else. A new article to pawn if the girl and I can agree on a price. Oh, I read those backwards, huh? Maybe? I don't know. Hm. Wait, I'm confused. Yes, me too, Rina <laughs> I thought you said that Mrs. Stroud brought in a storage ticket. It's really quite simple. Yes, the child brought me a storage ticket and the money owed on it, as you say. For this heavy black coat, which you returned to her. Care, as I understand it. That's right, yes, and rather unsurprisingly. As soon as the little ragamuffin put the thing on, she went rifling through the pockets. Oh, you mean... What? Did she know it's rude to stare at a lady? Oh, I see. So it came from the pocket of the overcoat, did it? If you mean this disc, then that's... Yes, exactly, ma'am. And she immediately tried to pawn it. For quite a high... For quite a high price as well. That is rather suspicious, I think. Give it up! I'm just trying to pass something like anyone else would. Mrs. Strad, may I ask who deposited the overcoat here in the first place? Um, well, me. Uh, it doesn't really appear to be your size. Me old man. It's me old man's, ain't it? Is it, Mrs. Strad? Yeah, this is definitely all rather suspicious. But we're not cops, we're lawyers, so we don't care. <laughs> Out of my way, please. Oh, you did it. <laughs> Who's this picture postcard English gentleman? Good day to you, ladies, gentlemen. What's your problem, eh? There is no problem, as long as you remove yourself. I have a matter to discuss with the proprietor. Um... And if you intend to make a problem of it, I shall see you outside, little girl, for the hiding you deserve. Look, ain't it obvious? I ain't done talking with him yet. If you think you're such a gent, you should know to wait in line. Well, you are an impudent little brat, aren't you? As well as a pickpocket. Eh? Who, who are you? I do you know who I am? The question is, do you not know who I am? You haven't the courtesy even to remember the faces of your victims, it seems. What? You mean I... from you? Broker. Um, yes, yeah, sir. Oh, good. <laughs> I believe this filthy pocket thief has just redeemed an article from you, no? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Um... The other in question belongs to me. I demand for it to be returned at once. Oh my! <laughs> now that's a lot. What are you trying to pull? Give me back my overcoat, you wastrel. And needless to say, any music bo box discs, too. Wait, no! You can't have it! You just can't! It's me old man's, or it was, now it's mine. Goodness, Mr. Narahodo. Shall I get some tea? <laughs> this is a very awkward situation. Yeah. I think perhaps we should hear both sides of the story in more detail. Really quickly though, you hear? 
really quickly so I can end the episode. <laughs> um, Miss Lestrade, what the gentleman is saying. What you think? It, it, it's all lies, ain't it? Obviously. I swore them all off. I ain't never laid eyes on a dandy before. Let's hear it now, you little ragamuffin. You stole it, didn't you? That ticket you brought in here just now. No, I swear it. I swear to God. It was barely an hour ago. It was barely an hour ago. I was walking along the street, minding my own business, when this little gutterling ran into me. I knew at once what had happened. I've been robbed yet again, I thought to myself. Those wretched pickpockets. Yet again? Yes, as you can see, I'm a man of impeccable style. This isn't the first time I've been targeted by these back slum scoundrels. <laughs> it's like, are you a JoJo character, sir? What's with the pose of man? Now then, relinquish my overcoat. <laughs> Come along now, Miss Lestrade. Give the good old gentleman his coat back. If you're going to cause trouble, I shall have no choice but to call the police. Oh, why does everyone think it's me? Just look at this dandy cove. And you think I'm the dodgy one? I am sorry, but no one's going to believe you. Well, didn't you write down in the booklet thing, like, who owns what item? Oh, wait, well, what about evidence? Yeah. Where's your evidence? I stole something, eh? Come on, let's see it. Oh, I have evidence, naturally. You what? Evidence? Evidence that the article Miss Lestrade redeemed actually belongs to this gentleman? Of course, when you only did this home, Mr. Winnipeg Sledger, to know the truth, yeah. I don't know why we didn't do that in the first place. <laughs> we would have looked up the name of the person who deposited the article in the first place. Yeah, that's brilliant. I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid that won't be possible. What? Why not? Oh? I never ask customers' names. That's a strict policy. Well, that seems like a dumb policy, don't do it. <laughs> Wait, but why not? Well, now, as you can imagine, some of my customers have circumstances to consider. Quite many of them prefer to maintain their anonymity. Anonymity. A great many of them prefer to remain in to a great many of them prefer to remain anonymous. Yes, I see. But then, how can you know if an article belongs to the person asking to redeem it? Oh, it's quite simple. Good sir, my trouble you for the watchword associated with the article in question. Of course, it's... Professor. <sighs> yes, that's right, and all the evidence we need. This gentleman is the rightful owner of the article, without doubt. A watcher? Interesting. Yeah, what? <laughs> so, about these watchers, Mr. Windebank? It's just as I explained. I never ask customers' names when they deposit items with me, just there are many reasons why. Certain customers would like to keep their activities secret. Um, that wasn't exactly a subtle glance Mr. Sholmes now, was it? <laughs> oh my god, his face is in the thing. <laughs> Great detectives have no dark secrets, none at all. Ah, uh, yes. Well, anyway, that's why I always ask for a watcher whenever I accept a new article. In many ways, it's like the secret combination that members use to unlock a vault. The date, a deposit, a description, and a watchword uniquely identify each item. And of course, then I give them a storage ticket to the customer. When someone comes to redeem something, I ask for the ticket and the watchword. Did you not ask the girl for the watchword? <laughs> and if someone tests the correct watchword, you return the article? That's right, sir. Yes, as soon as, our as soon as the requisite fee is paid. And I supplied you with the information you require already. But for the avoidance of doubt, the article in question is an overcoat deposited two months ago on 15th of February. With a watchword of Professor. <clears throat> All perfectly correct information, sir. But, but how? Really, this is beyond a joke now. There's no further room for doubt. Aww. Okay. 
So, uh... Oops. Um, excuse me, but who exactly are you? Well, been expect the Inquirer to introduce himself first. Though clearly you are not British, so I perhaps our ways are foreign to you. Oh, I'm sorry, yes, we're from the Empire of Japan. We're studying here. Oh yes, Japan. I've heard talk of the place. What? <laughs> it was like, shimmy, shimmy. The inhabitants live on some fiery brown colored soup dressed up in exotic spices. Questionable. Questionable phrasing here, sir. Um, you might be thinking of somewhere else. And what was that theatrical gest gestures about, huh? <laughs> Perhaps. Anyway, if you are a gentleman, sir, you offer your own name first before inquiring after the name of another. Of course, yes. I'm Rina Skeynor Hodo. I'm a lawyer. Well, soon of law, really. My name is Satami Kataba. I am Mr. Narahodo's assistant. I see. My name is Benedict. Yes. Eggert Benedict. Uh, okay. Enchant- Enchante? Enchante? He's so refined in how he holds himself and how he speaks. But the name is really suspicious. <laughs> now, to the matter at hand. What are you doing? <laughs> My overcoat. Return it at once. To someone with the style someone with the style to carry it off. Ugh. I'm willing mix. Every breath he takes. I can't stop watching him. <laughs> I got that joke. Uh, okay. So, let that be an end to the matter. And thank you for being- Thank you for your custom, Mr. Edgar to Benedict, sir. Did he just pickpocket a pickpocket? With such reasonable rates of interest, I may decide to come back. <laughs> this is why I ate grown-ups. Just because I'm a dive, everyone thinks that makes me a liar. And the contents of the coat pockets, if you please, broker. But of course, sir, here's a disc for you. Just this one. Pardon, sir. I was expecting another. Or that is, I deposited another. Another disc? Oh, um, oh dear. I regret to inform you, sir, that was deposited with me it was merely the overcoat. The disc happened to be in the pockets, but I was completely unaware of it. Oh, the disc happened in one of the pockets, but I was completely unaware of it until now. So, Gutterling, you're hiding more of what is rightfully mine, are you? Suzui, eh? I know nothing about it. Very well. Then I shall bid you farewell. Say goodbye to style. Oh, wait a minute, I'll disc. Is mine. Ugh. What do you think you're doing, you little tramp? You've drawn blood, you filthy animal. <gasps> oh my, yes, there's blood on the disc. It's because of all those sharp little bumps. The man was to scratch his finger on them. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, fight, fight, fight. <laughs> I found it first, all right. I mean, it belonged to me, old man. So you're not having it. Oi, you, you take it. Wait, me? Buying onto it, they'll have it off me again, so you keep hold of it. Um, Miss Lestrade, I... Why is this just so important to her? And now it's in our court record. That's concerning. <laughs> you there, in the black library. Library. Hand that disc to me at once, please. No, don't. He's lying. Grown-ups are all just liars. Um, what do I do? How am I going to resolve this? On the next episode! <laughs> Alright, if I click, is it, are we going to fade to black at any point soon? Nope, but that's good enough. Okay. So the past, we're at a little past an hour. So, hi. See you guys all next time. Laters.